what what is the feeling? What is the the emotion like right now, having the season end the way that it did? No, it's raw. It's uh, this sports is so uh, um, you know uh, gratifying, and so many great things happen. It's just cruel too at times like this because I feel for the players because they put so much into it, and we're such a special group. You know, it's like I just told them. You know, it's not always fair. You know, I don't think I've ever had such a good blend of good people and good players. And it really creates a bond that you hate to see them not get what, you know, everybody thinks they deserve it this time of year. You know, I've been there with them every step of the way and seeing what they put into it and how much they cared. So, you know, they're a very easy group to pull for you know, as a fan, as a coach, as a manager, as a teammate. And, uh, I just feel that, that for them, you know, it's it's not something it, that's sharp either. It, it's like a dull, you know, it's not going to go away. But uh, in a lot of ways, you, you hope it's a, a stepping stone. And it drives you in the off season. I know it will be in, in Billy, and, and uh, I know the players, you know, hopefully we can gain something from the pain. It was, uh, but, you know, it's one of those things you can't do anything but say it was self-inflicted. It's not like... Uh, you know, there, you get, you know, you, you seek your level, and we're not going to be able to, to continue to play. But uh, I think I feel for the players and their families and the fans that uh, were so supportive. And uh, I think that's what I, I take. The, dis, the biggest disappointment I take is for the players and the fans and, and the organization. There's so many people that, you know, give so much to it, trying to get to the to the last step, and it's so difficult. But uh, you know, it's just, uh, but like I said, I'm, I, I, everyone feels that way this time of year, the 10 teams play in that, you know, it's, it's such a roll of the dice in, in October, but, you know, we just didn't do much with the bats tonight. Got to give them a lot of credit. They uh, really pitch well the whole series for the most part. They've got a lot of quality arms and they just, they just keep coming at you. And, you know, they kind of got it going this time of year. So, and I've known Bob for a long time always pull for his teams because I know how he goes about it so you know if, if you had to be eliminated you know it's a it's a, it's a well run to your point about the offense just one hit tonight two base runners and for much of the season you guys were really consistent offensively and it seems like more nights than normal over the last few weeks month that hasn't quite been the case what do you think changed down the stretch? Well, I, I think last night was indicative of a game where, where we, we got into, into the flow of, of, what, of what we were able to do well because the pitcher allowed us to. And uh, the first night and tonight, they, they didn't allow us to get into the things that we're really good at. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, we, we faced a lot of good pitching here the last month, but, but we did early in the season too, it seemed like. And um, we, ju we just couldn't get to the things that we do well uh, as, as often. You know, I think Starling, I mean, I'm so proud of him posting up. That last at bat almost took him out. But uh, I think that's indicative of, of these guys, how much they care for each other, trying to be there. Uh, I wish we could have gotten, you know, you know I, I know he was in some discomfort. I mean, the guys going out there playing with, uh, you know, what amounts to a broken finger, trying to get through it. And he did for a while, but not once did he – have an excuse. I think mean, Lindor basically hit a line drive off his kneecap, and uh, but you know San Diego's probably got some people like that too. So it is what it is. It's a sport that's that challenges in those challenges you in those areas. Randy, Buck, in your, in your experience, when a season ends in disappointment like this, is there something to the idea that a team can learn from it? come back hungry, build on it, or is every year different, different set of players, different culture? Different? Yeah, uh, you know, there's yes and no to all that. I, it, uh, not right now. You don't feel that right now because you're just the sting of, of the, uh, of just, you know, it's over. You know, this, this routine and pattern you've been into so long, when you wake up tomorrow, it's not going to be there. So, um, sure. Some of the best development of players and people and whatever happens 
uh, about three weeks after this is over when you finally get a moment where you're able to see things more, cl more clearly because you're so close to it, the everyday interaction. There's so many things that, that you know, the team and the organization have gotten ahead of and been proactive instead of reactive and, you know, reflected in the season. But, um, but you know, right now is not – that they won't feel that, but down the road, I'm hoping that is the case, especially with some of the younger players. And, you know, in today's world, sports world, things change so much. That's why when you get a good group like this together, you want to, you know, try to be the last team standing because you know how hard it is to get through basically what amounts to eight or nine months of seven days a week trying to get there. So it's cruel. It really is. What are, what are some of the things about the culture that you and the players and Billy – started to build this year that you want to make sure to hold on to going forward? Well, it's about the players. It's about the people. And, and uh, you want to – you're trying to, you know, from the get-go, and Billy and I were talking, and Steve, it's about trying to do things that fans can trust. You know, and you know, talk about it, do it. You know, it's been enough lip service, you know, not here necessarily. Just in general, people, fans don't want – they just, you know, show me, you know, play better. And uh, I kept hoping that we were going to find our footing tonight and – and uh, start doing some things that we've been good at. But, you know, they kept us from doing it. Obviously, they pitched real well. Joel, far left. Buck, uh, you mentioned that everyone kind of feels they deserve it and wants to be the last team standing. But I'm wondering between your combination of age, lo big guys looming free agents, and guys having such excellent years that might be hard to repeat, do you feel like you squandered something you might not be able to grab again? I, you know, that, that's reality. Reality will show you that it's hard. You know, you think, oh, I just do this and re-sign this, do that. No, there's a lot more to it. You know, I know how good a o ownership we have. I know how good a leadership we have in the baseball department. And I know, um, you know, the core players that care a lot. But, you know, it's like I just told them, now it becomes, you know, you got to do what's best for your families. you got to do what's best for, you know, it, it becomes – you know, the business part of it kind of gets in there where the players are concerned, rightfully so. So you don't know. You don't know. I, you know I, but I do know that uh, the people that are evaluating what we need and, and can do and can't do, are, you know, it gives me a lot of confidence. I know that uh, um, I look back at the players that we brought in here and, you know, I go out of this saying, oh, boy, I'm glad they're signed to, to next year, you know. So... That tells you the confidence I have in the in the decisions that we'll be making about about players because the Mets are a very precious thing to a lot of people, and uh, we need to continue down the path of evaluating not only good players but good people that uh, you can count on. But the other thing is, do you, you spent the season kind of building up kind of uh, credentials, kind of love with your fan base? Do you think you? lost something significant last weekend in Atlanta and this weekend here that you had built all year with your with your fan base? Oh, well, I, you know, those are personal emotions. You know, when you, you got a, something that people care about as much as they do, their team, you know, the Mets, um, you know, that frustration, people express it in different ways. You know, I, you know I, it's a very sincere group. They're trying to do as good as they could do, you know. There's a reason why the Braves were world champions last year and have a chance this year. But, you know, we've been real good against them. They, well, they beat us one more time than we did. And like I told our players, I don't, I don't want them going around apologizing for winning 101, 102 games. But all that does is give you a chance to do what we were able to do the last three games. So that's about all you get back for it. And that's, that's frustrating and it hurts. You know, but, you know, I hurt for our players and our fans more than – anything else in the whole organization because I know how much everybody put into it from heck the groundskeeper in St. Lucie to the, the people that, you know, all the way through it, you know, that it all, you know, the, it plays off of how we do. You know, it's a great responsibility that our players took on that responsibility. A lot of people run from it. They didn't. Far left there, Andy. Buck, with, uh, with Musgrove, what did you see from him that caused you to ask the umpires for a check? Uh, it was, you know, we have privy to a lot of things that uh, point that direction. Obviously, you know, I, I love him as a pitcher, I always have, and uh, that's the only thing I kind of, you know, 
I feel kind of bad about it, is that it, it, but it won't cast anything. He's too good a pitcher, and they're too good a, you know, those, without getting into a lot of things, you know, the spin rates and different things that you, I'm sure you're all aware of, you know, when you see something that, uh, that, uh, that jumps out at you. I get a lot of information in the dugout that, uh, you know, we certainly weren't having much luck uh, the way it was going, that's for sure. But, you know, I'm charged with doing what's best for the New York Mets, and if it makes, you know, however it might make me look or, uh, or whatever, I'm going to do that every time and live with the consequences. I'm not here to um, not hurt somebody's feelings, you know. I'm going to do what's best for our players in the New York Mets, and uh, I felt like that was best for us right now. There's some pretty obvious reasons why it was uh, why it was necessary. You got a battery here in the front. Hey, uh, Buck, there certainly were signs of this going back like a month, wasn't there? I mean, if you had won a game here or there from the Cubs, Miami, Washington, you wouldn't even have been in the situation mm -hmm. where you had to lose, where you lost out in Atlanta. You'd, you would have been on to the NLDS. So when you do the autopsy of the whole season and you put it all together on how this came about, I know it's early, but what do you think you'll be pointing to when you when you look at it all? You'll certainly look at those things because there's you know we're we're very hard on ourselves, but I'll also think about the ten or fifteen games that we shouldn't have won. You know we're down six or seven runs in the last inning, and you know nobody remembers those all those games that uh, you won that you don't people don't normally win. So you know people will dwell on you know this one here and this one here. I never got into saying that somebody should beat somebody at this level. That's just not, you know, it may look like that on paper, but, you know, um, I dwell more on all the games that we won that we, people said we shouldn't have, but I know that's not fashionable. Thanks, Buck. You good? Okay, thank you.